So good evening. Uh, welcome to the Cape Elizabeth fin Finance Committee workshop for Tuesday, April 27th, um, 2021. And we are continuing uh, some discussions around the, for the Finance Committee uh, that were started last night. Um, so I am just gonna take a look and see if we have any members of the public who might wanna make any comment before we get started. See a few folks in there. Um, Looks like they all are associated with the meeting in some way. So uh, why don't we go ahead and get started? And um, looks like the first item on our agenda is the review of the fee schedule and recommended changes. Um, so Matt, do you want to tee this up for us? Uh, I'd be happy to, Mr. Chairman. Th thank you for that. Uh, yes, what, what we have this evening is an up. Uh, Currently, we have our, our, our schedule of fees that the town charges for, across the different departments that, that you'll notice it, it came as part of your uh, packet for this evening. And uh, what we have, there are a few that we've recommended for this year to go through for changes uh, and some that are just to, to maintain the status quo on. Uh, those that uh, we currently have, you'll notice as you go down through the uh, spreadsheet, is from the clerk's office. There are some that are looking to be recommended to be uh, removed as they're not uh, really applicable as much anymore. Uh, through uh, ACP has a couple that you'll you notice the short-term rental fee is, is identified in there. And this would be uh, effective as of July 1. And then come back to that again, uh, possibly uh, next year if you want to, uh, and set it as part of the fee schedule or, uh, for next year, sorry. Uh, to set that as part of the fee schedule for next year. And then uh, scrolling further down, there are some recommended uh, changes by the police department for private details and school events and a cruiser fee. And then uh, those are to try to bring us in more in line with what surrounding departments are charging uh, based on uh, Chief Fenton's review of other, of other departments and, and where they're at. We're still uh, uh, reasonable, but we are uh, at the present time uh, under considerably in comparison to the surrounding communities. And then uh, going further, we have Public Works has a number of recommended increases that they have uh, in there to bring those in line with where the market uh, currently is at, uh, as well as some of the expenses that we do incur to uh, dispose of different uh, different debris and other materials uh, through the Public Works, uh, uh, sorry, the Recycling Center. And then uh, let's see, and then our street opening charges and things along those lines that we have and uh, different different work that we have from a, from a paving side of it. Uh, Thomas Memorial Library has uh, a couple of fees that uh, looking to eliminate and then uh, one to, uh, uh, to bring our uh, non-resident borrower fee in line with what uh, other communities may have. And then uh, and then spurring church fees, you'll see that the uh, parking attendant is being eliminated. So in many ways, what we're trying to do is is bring this up to date with what the current operations are, as it's been uh, it's been a bit of time uh, since since it was last last uh, last reviewed. So um, that's why we brought this this forward this evening, and so council could have have a look at that as well. And if you'd like me to, uh, if we make it easier, I'd also be able to share my screen if there's areas that you'd like to take a look at uh, to see as well. Yeah, I think given the size of the chart, it may be just as easy for us to each look at them on our own screens yeah, unless somebody's got a, a different suggestion for that. Um, thanks for teeing that up, Matt. And I, I would just add to that before we move to a discussion. Uh, this is, I believe, if I'm recalling correctly, this is a, a new item to our budget review agenda um, this year, uh, brought about as a suggestion, I believe, from Councillor Straw. Um, and uh, just to bring us in line with best practice and make sure that we're reviewing these fees on a regular basis. Um, so I'd like to, you know, just really thank the manager for pulling this together, um, pulling this document together. I think this is a great starting place for discussion. Um, and I, I really appreciate the work that's gone into this. Um, I think a couple of additional pieces of information, I, I don't have any particular questions um, or, or comments on, on the proposals right now. I, I, well, I have one question, but I'll wait, I'll hold off on that um, for right now. But I, I think a couple of other pieces of information that I would appreciate seeing on this sort of going forward um, would be 
uh, just a sense of the, you know, the amount of revenue that was brought in from each of these fees, um, at, you know, next year, would <laughs> be a great, yeah, great piece to add. Um, and then also, um, Yeah, I, I think that's actually probably the, the biggest piece that, that I'd like to see added if we could for, for next year, but yeah. We, we can do that happily. Thank you for that idea. Other, um, other uh, questions, thoughts, suggestions looking through this? I, I, yeah, Valerie? Um, I, I think those were really good suggestions. I kind of like to see, I noticed some of them show when they were revised. I'd like to see when they were revised or when they were implemented. So if it was 2001, it might be something we need to look at. Um, it's nice to see, uh, we have quite a few that say 2008. And I think that would help me um, have an idea of, oh, maybe we need to look at this. It's been, it's been a while. No, that, that's great too. If, if we can get that, if we can find that information, I think that, yeah, that'd mm -hmm. be a great column to, to add in as well. And I, I'd be remiss if I didn't thank Deborah for, as the repository of majority of this information. She, she did yeoman's work on pulling this together and, uh, and whipsawing department heads to make sure they, uh, they went through this. The one other, if I, if I could just interject for a moment, Mr. Chairman, uh, regarding uh, Fort Williams, uh, you'll notice that there are no recommendations for changes on that, but that was by design as the uh, park committee is currently working on their master planning and uh, speaking with uh, Kathy Raptus. They do have this on their docket to review this year and come back probably in advance of the next fiscal year or by the end of the calendar year. Great, thank you, Matt. Nicole, I was going to oh, ask sorry. about. Just, yeah. I, I just wanted to make sure, Valerie. Was that did you, was that did that answer your question? Sorry. Okay. Sorry. Go ahead, Nicole. Um, I was going to ask about the Fort Williams, but. Um, the revenue column is what I was looking for too. What's the recommendation for the catering and liquor license removal? Is it just not utilized or is it just this year only as a like COVID relief thing? What, why is it being recommended for elimination? There we go, uh, Debbie's, Debbie's hammering up. There you go. You, you dropped away for, off my screen for a sec, but you popped up in the top square. So sorry. sorry. <laughs> um, Several years ago, the council was looking at ways to be um, friendly to businesses, business friendly. We went over the liquor license policy, who can sign off on that, trying to stream that, streamline that process. We looked at these fees. I mean, we do have a review um, of catering permits to come in. They, I sent it out to the uh, codes officer, police and fire for review. So there is time spent on it. But that was one area where the town said, you know, do we really have to hit these liquor licenses, you know, each time that they come in again, trying to get back to the more business friendly. Um, we don't do that many. It's somebody coming in town catering a wedding or a party. We don't do that many, maybe a half a dozen a year uh, in a regular year, non COVID. Um, so we certainly could still charge it if you wanted to, but again, this is just trying to be part of that kind of business friendly, um, atmosphere that the town was trying to do. And this was a number of years ago that we did that and it just never got removed from the fee schedule. But if it's something that the council wants to see us charge for, we certainly, um, you know, we'll do so as well. No, that's helpful to know. Thank you. Do we have any sort of fee for, um, you know, the code enforcement officer coming out and making sure that restaurants are in compliance. I'm trying to uh, we, see. Uh, as far as a health, uh, like a health review. Yeah, now, health uh, and safety review of the facilities. At, at the present time, no, um, but it's, it's, it's something that, you know, they'll, they'll do on a, on a routine inspection as well, uh, but it's not uh, something that's annually required uh, to perform. So, uh, okay. And it's such a low volume that we have uh, to, to apply it to. So, but uh, generally it's been as, as needed. Okay, thank you. There is a line item for health permits based on square footage. Is it, is it just that it's not it, under ACP? I'm just scrolling to that uh, now. It's, uh, oh, I was looking under like building permits, planning board. I see it now. Yeah. That, 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 as a as a one time as a one time fee though versus uh, oh an uh, initial the, thing okay yeah initially got it okay what 
I, I guess not to jump in, but sorry, my question was what, where does, where does the town oversight um, of those kinds of activities, whether it be liquor license or, you know, uh, you know, health and service condition kind of things overlap with whatever the state's doing too. On the, on the liquor license end of it, uh, ultimately it comes down to the, the towns can decide uh, what, what they allow for businesses to do as far as on-premise and off-premise uh, serving of alcohol. Uh, ultimately it comes down to the state approving the liquor license and the town is it's more of a uh, pro forma uh, than anything else at that, at that point in time. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, uh, Councilor Garvin, uh, just the other day, I received a letter from the State Liquor Enforcement Agency uh, where there's a new bill in front of the legislature uh, because Cape Elizabeth restricted liquor sales to on-premise uh, consumption on, in a couple of different fashions back in 1968 and 1975. Uh, we have a little bit of a hitch along with 278 other towns in the state of Maine who have also taken similar steps. Uh, Luckily, we have a legislative advocate in Augusta who has brought forward a bill to allow, uh, 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 you know, establishments that have previously, you know, have been previously been approved. Or the, I guess they're working on a legislative remedy that hopefully will come back or come back to the council to adopt in uh, either June or July uh, once the legislature comes out of session uh, to, to correct that fix. But that's about the closest extent you have is that towns can decide to be, in a sense, uh, they can restrict liquor sales or be dry towns going up back to the older blue laws. So, um, but that's that's pretty much the extent of it. And then on the on the health side of it, yes, Ben has the ability to to act uh, in cases where there may be uh, uh, health, health issues that do take place. And uh, there are other areas where you may find uh, uh, a residents may have, uh, you know, there may be a health, safety, and welfare issue that exists there uh, for condemning a property or with restaurants as well to do that. Um, in that in that case, if it was something to that level, we would go out and probably get outside uh, assistance as well. But for like state for the for the restaurants, this, does the state inspe inspect them every year, or just when complaints are made, or how does that work? I think as on an as needed basis. Uh, they, I don't think they do it on a regular, uh, regular okay. routine inspection uh, inspection route. I'm raising the question less around revenue and and the fee associated with it so much as I am just a you know concern about the well being of the business. I guess yeah. it's, it's uh, I, I'm not as concerned about the hundred or fifty dollar fee or whatever whether that's annual. I don't think based on the number of restaurants and things like that that we have in town that that's likely to be a large source of revenue to begin with, no matter what, even if we were doing it annually. But I guess it, um, as long as nobody else has a concern about it, not that activity not occurring frequently enough. I, 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 was, I was totally unaware of what, what, on what schedule that the state was involved in all that stuff, so. Are you asking about restaurant health inspections or- Yeah. Yeah, health. Health, health, health yeah. Um, I know that um, South Portland, uh, where our store is in South Portland, um, they do have a health inspector in South Portland, and they uh, inspect when you uh, get your initial license, and then they do uh, periodic annual spot checks. Uh, checks, spot checks. But it's um, the city doing it, not the state. The state um, the state from a, uh, uh, because of the type of store we have, as well as our store in Cape Elizabeth, the, the state uh, does a, an, an inspection every year. Uh, the U, uh, the uh, Department of Ag Conservation and Forestry uh, will do an inspection every year at stores. So uh, in South Portland, they're not only getting a health inspection from the city and, and and very uh, rarely from the state, but the State Department of Ag, Conservation, and Forestry does an annual inspection um, in our store in Cape and the one in South Portland. So they come into play there. But then it's on a as complaint basis. Okay. 
Uh, do any other counselors have questions uh, pertaining to the fee schedule? It's Matt, do you want to help setting up a database or do you want to keep an Excel spreadsheet, Deb? This is really daunting. I have to it is tell daunting. you. <laughs> well, yeah, because we do have so many that, uh, you know, we have all the departments that are pulled into this one, into this one spreadsheet and uh, each department has, you know, they've been broken down into more, I guess you could say more user friendly uh, uh, templates where, you know, if it came to ACP, they'd have their fees mm -hmm. and their fee schedule broken down in a much more uh, manageable oh, cool. approach. And this is just the, the larger, oh, the, this is kind of the catch all uh, of all the fees that we do have, but uh, there may be, a, you know, I guess when we come back to this again in the future, we may do some reworking of it to make it a little bit uh, mm -hmm. attractive, mm -hmm. I guess. <laughs> And maybe a little more user friendly, but uh, this is this has really been the been the master list that has been been kept for for forever. So I guess my only other question on this, um, and I'm not sure this could be a question for either Matt or Jamie, um, is just a process question. So is this um, is this something you know, assuming that that there are no recommended changes um, from tonight's workshop that we would be seeing come before the council at our May meeting um, for approval or what, what's, the, what's the next step? If, if I may, uh, you know, looking at that, what we do have to, for the recommended, you know, the few changes that we do have on here, uh, we would probably pull that together in a memo, identify them and have them available for the May 10th uh, meeting to have effective as of say July 1 uh, at that point and be starting for the new fiscal year. Okay. Are there any other questions or, yeah, Jamie? Yeah, I was gonna say, it, so I, on the go forward basis, it's probably a good idea, unless there's, I, I, I don't imagine that there's any of these that for a statutory reason have to run on a calendar year or something like that. So going forward, <clears throat> We've got the revised date. We've got, I think there's three pertinent dates here, whatever the effective date was with um, initiating the fee, um, when it was last revised, and then based on this being a new process going forward, the fact that they were all reviewed, right? So even if it didn't change, all of these have now been reviewed and considered and no action taken. If, you know, so that somebody doesn't look and say, oh, well, it hasn't been revised since May 1 of 2009. Has anybody even looked at it? Yeah, we, we looked at it just this year and we just decided not to do anything, so. Yeah, I think that's a great uh, great note to have as yeah. well for each time. Similar to if you, uh, you know, when the council adopts its council rules or things along those right. lines that you note each year when that on the date that that takes place. I think that's a great yeah. suggestion as well. Thank you. Great. Well, if there are no further questions, I will uh, bring us along to our next item, which is a uh, review of um, any adjustments that uh, counselors would like to see to the overall budget. Hey, Jeremy, can I just ask, sorry, one last question yes. on those fees. So Matt, a whole bunch of these are changes to the, the most, the most changes are changes in the public works area. And, um, it, it, does Jay have a plan to update signage and, you know, communicate that? And I mean, most of them affect more commercial type or, you know, heavy item disposal. But if, you know, if people are coming and expecting, hey, this was $5 a load last week and all of a sudden it's $25 a load this week or something, you know. Yeah, they, they will have to, you know, especially because we do have commercial haulers that do come up there. We do have a number of them. So what we'll have to do is, uh, I know Jay's planning on doing outreach to them to say, hey, okay. when these do get adopted, this is these will be the changes. And then uh, I think also we have a lovely sign up there that we can identify to say, you know, be advised our new new fee, sc yeah. fee schedule, kind of a, a general announcement, and then more specific to those who it impacts. Yeah. And so if we're voting on this in May and they're not taking effect till July 1, I think that's a good, that's a sufficient amount of time for publicizing that. Um, you know, maybe 
I don't know if it's even worth creating just a little buck slip kind of thing too to have to hand out to folks if they are asking what the fees are or something like that. Maybe a short print run of those. But anyway. Oh, that's a great idea. Yeah. Okay. Great. So moving on to the review of any adjustments to the budget. Are there any any counselors who would like to propose any adjustments at this time? Practicing my Zoom 10 second wait here. <laughs> Matt, do you want to just talk about the um, the memo that you sent around and sort of kind of where we stand? Sure. No, that, that, based, be, based on current. Yeah, I, I would be happy to. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, yeah. So as as you noticed today, I was busy uh, shipping you additional information, and Deborah was busy posting additional information in advance of this evening's meeting. And uh, what uh, the one item that I thought would be helpful after last night's conversation. Uh, was the uh, how uh, actually the uh, the information or how the the impacts of the different rates interact with each other? And so uh, you know, look, uh, let's see. I'm just calling up my file here now. Uh, sorry. Um, so what I thought I would do was would be provide a uh, just basically as I said to James, uh, Councilors Garvin and and, and Gabrielson before. I went to back to my high school days and thought it'd be easier to show my work. Uh, and that way one could look at that and follow the step-by-step -step basis as to how the uh, components all work together. So uh, as you'll notice, the, uh, the overall tax impact uh, for this year's budget uh, based on school, county and town uh, increases is 3.41%. Uh, as one looks at that at the spreadsheet on the pro forma, you see the different uh, components that add up to, you know, three point you know, 3.5 percent here, 3.45, and 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 so on. Uh, 3.51, 2.3, and 3.45 percent increases on each of those components. But how those end up working is based on the percentages to which they, to which they actually uh, make up of the overall rate. So uh, what I thought might be helpful was to show, you know, the 3.41 percent how that impacts. So uh, looking at the first part uh, to try to understand. Uh, step one of the math, uh, the municipal increase, for example, there's a 14 cent change on the mill rate for the town side uh, from $3.99 to $4.13, which is an increase of 3.51% to the tax rate. The, the same would take place on the county where it would be going from 87 cents to 89 cents, a two, a two cent increase or 2.3% to the tax rate. And then on the school side from $15.06 to $15.58 uh, for 52 cents or 3.45%. So to understand how that interacts with each other and, and, uh, and not uh, be concerned that it's, it's an astronomical change, uh, one then would go and say, okay, uh, we'll look at what the overall rate, uh, the new rate is as a component to the, to, the, to the overall rate of the town. So you would take the municipal rate of $4, the new rate at $4.13 and divide it by the overall rate of $20.60. And you'll find that that's 20, roughly 20% 20 of the tax rate. And then on the county, it's 4.3%. And then on the, on the school, it's 75% of the rate. Obviously that makes sense as they're, you know, they're the largest, uh, they're the largest entity at $15 in the town and the, and the county at lower percentages. And then how those inter interact uh, with each other at that point would be, one would take the three and a half percent municipal increase and multiply it by the percentage of the uh, that that incorporates to the overall rate, and that gives you you know three point five percent times twenty percent gives you seven uh, seven tenths of one percent to the overall rate, and then uh, if that would flow through the county, which adds just under uh, one one hundredth of one percent, and then the the, the school at 2.6% of the rate. So, and those three combined after being adjusted to the 3.41% overall tax increase that, that the taxpayers will find on this year's budget. But uh, you know, 
it's easy to do quickly on a cal on a calculator, but it's better to understand the the step by step process that goes through. And hopefully, that will uh, you know, if if there are others out there, in spe specifically, you know, the residents of town who are trying to figure out how that uh, ultimately comes down and impacts them. Hopefully, this will be helpful to them as well. It's it's easier to put the information out there than it is to try to uh, figure it out. So hopefully, that'll be helpful as the process goes forward. Great. Thank you, Matt. That was a fun any, one to do. <laughs> yeah, any questions from counselors on that? Yeah, I don't Jim. have it right in front of me, Matt, but is that county jump a lot smaller than it's been the last couple of years? I feel like the county jump has been much more significant the last few years. Yeah, it, 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 was, it was a bit less than uh, the prior years. Uh, for, for you know they 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 had a dramatic pause uh, for, as we all did last year, but they had a lot of their operations had really closed down uh, in comparison to what what we do. At the same time, I think they you know the real estate market may have helped them quite a bit as well with at the registry of deeds uh, with recordings and uh, transfer tax fees that would also go in there. Uh, the the so I, I anticipate next year we may see. I, I know they were looking to have a char charter change and uh, go to a fiscal year. So I think this is also a step that they were looking to take in the interim that, that conservative this year and then next year they may be looking at two different commitments. So we may have, uh, they, we may have two bills from the county in one year as they, they, they changed right now and forever. Uh, they've been on an annual, uh, on a calendar year uh, for their fiscal year. So they're, they're converting to a July 1, June 30th date, I believe in the next uh, a year from now. So I think they're they're playing that conservatively as well, but I think they they had some savings that uh, that also positively impacted us this year. Usually they're in about the four four and a half percent to to five range uh, on a consistent basis. So yeah, this is a this is a, a conservative budget year for them. Other questions? I would note that we have um, both um, Marcy and Superintendent Wolfram um, joining us tonight if you folks have other questions pertaining to the school budget as well. I'm gonna hold it open that if people would like to make other suggestions as we move along, um, feel free to bring them up, but uh, suggest that maybe we move along to the next part of the discussion, which is a review of the how the budget um, informed by the council goals. So again, a big thanks to Councillor Boucher for all the work that she put into helping pull together these, these goals. Um, I think we've made a lot of progress in how they're presented and how concise they are. And uh, the, the, the point of having this discussion is um, to, to have a circle back, um, having gone through the exercise of establishing goals for the council and uh, hold a place for some discussion of how well we've done in making sure that these goals are reflected in the budget that we are proposing. Um, and what I think I would suggest um, for this is that we uh, maybe just take a look and go through the, you know, the council goals starting on, I guess it's page four um, of the strategic map um, and just look through to, to see if there are any areas um, where we've established goals that may not be adequately reflected in the budget. Um, and I, um, unless people have another suggestion for how to approach this. I don't, did, Nicole, did you have any specific thoughts on it? We had a great conversation this morning with, um, with Phil and and Heather um, and you know for, at the school board level they have those four goals that they shared with us last night which they're reviewing as part of each of each meeting um, we have we have a few more than four so I want to make sure that we don't skip any um, yeah I think just starting with where we might um, where there might be gaps is a good starting place at least. I think because the, actually, as I'm looking through it, because the goals and objectives as they're stated starting on page five of the council goal document are a little bit more um, actionable, actionable than, than the, the framing statements. 
Um, perhaps we could just um, start with the infrastructure piece and go through each of these, these major goal areas um, one by one, uh, just to see what we've got. So um, under infrastructure, our, our overall goals for this year are to maintain the current infrastructure while building toward the future, uh, create climate climate action goals and provide reliable public and emergency services. Um, and so I'm gonna just pause on that and see if people have any questions about how these goals and objectives are reflected in this year's budget. Mr. Chairman, if it may, if it may be helpful, I could, I could tie some of these elements in uh, that. That'd be great, Matt may be fruitful for the council to consider. Uh, yeah, looking under infrastructure and maintaining current infrastructure while building towards the future. Uh, one item that we have as far as uh, stay current with capital improvement uh, projects, uh, Willow Brook and the replacement of that is a, is a major infrastructure project that is in this year's budget uh, that is uh, critical in many different ways from environmental as well as uh, our, on our infrastructure uh, to have that in there as well as the replacement of engine two uh, in this year, which is a big ticket uh, uh, in, uh, capital infrastructure item that we, uh, capital, large item capital item that we do have uh, as, uh, you know, maintaining our, our, our capital projects. And then also the uh, engineering and planning for Shore Road uh, and the eventual uh, rebuild and replacement of, or repair of that. And then, uh, uh, ultimately looking at addressing traffic and parking challenges. And uh, seems like forever ago, but I have Tom Erico lined up from uh, TY Lynn to come and finally uh, make a presentation to the council on May 10th regarding uh, the uh, uh, intersection, uh, town center intersection uh, project and, uh, and recommendations that we'll have there for, fu for future planning uh, needs as well. So uh, trying to address those specific points and then uh, further uh, flowing down to uh, creating climate action goals, uh, reducing energy dependence and consumption and greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, those, those are in process uh, in a sense due to the, uh, uh, the work that we are doing on the next point, which is completing solar project at the recycling facility, the LED street lamp installation and EV charging stations. And all, all three elements are, are Two out of three are in the current budget, and the third is uh, in process with uh, with Encore Renewables as they're waiting to get their their impact uh, impact statement from CMP uh, along with everybody else who's doing solar installations. But uh, that's uh, but those are all uh, very live at this point in time and tied and tied in uh, to that to that point. So I guess the two questions that I have um, here, Matt, are the first objective under the climate action plan looking to create climate goals for the town and develop a plan with aggressive greenhouse gas reduction goals and then the item under uh, reliable public and emergency services of determining a long-term need for fire and rescue services are those items that we need specific budget line items for um, how are we anticipating moving forward on those I think both of those are, are more longer term planning. I know Peter has provided me with a five year uh, plan for on the on the on the fire side of it as well uh, to, to do that to do that work uh, that he had provided to me towards the end of the year. So I'd like to, you know, over the course of either the summer or uh, the summer would probably be the best time to to bring both of those elements forward uh, by the workshop approach, at least to have council conversation specific to the uh, the climate action plan as well. I think that would be an area that we'd want to have uh, more of a discussion on, and then, and then focus direction from that point. And then the fire, the fire service. I think we'd have the chief come in uh, to sit down and update the council regarding uh, the long-term plan that we have there. Valerie, did you? I was just wondering if, if um with the climate action goals is that something that we want to talk to our energy committee or our conservation committee um, recycling committee have um have them involved with that somehow also i think that'd be awesome yeah to, to have you know almost like a joint workshop between all three entities mm -hmm. would be a strong strong move great let's go to jamie and then penny thanks jeremy I don't think that there's a significant um, 
budget allocation that needs to be uh, assigned to that item. But I think there's going to be a lot of investment of people's time um, for the remaining seven or so months of the year on that item. And I think, you know, when we were going through these goals, um, you know, we did have a little bit of debate amongst ourselves about, you know, where we are in sort of the order of operations here in terms of creating the goals and, and, and you know, measurements that make sense for us. What do we need to do to get to that point, et cetera, et cetera. And I think we're at the, we're at the phase of figuring out, you know, what work and research and um, sort of knowledge sharing from others that have already done some of this work already in the area, can we take and, and you know, basically leverage for our own purposes, come up with anything that, that um, fills known gaps within that, and then go forward from there. I think coming out of that for next year, we'd probably start to, you know, earmark more investment specifically against some of those things. So if there's if there's a, a specific goal um, related to uh, climate and climate action that comes out of that process, well, what's what's the cost of associated with that? Is that a one year thing? Is that a multi year, et cetera, et cetera? Um, but I think I think we we should plan to get serious in the next six months about you know, inviting Troy Moon from the city of Portland and Julie Rosenbach from South Portland and others that have been, you know, and GP COG, um, which is, this has been a, a central pillar of their current um, uh, vision work that they've been doing for the region. Um, bring all of those folks together that have already started to pave uh, the road on this a little bit and figure out how we can either piggyback off of their work, hitch our train to, their engine, et cetera, uh, and go from there. Any? Um, yes, I, uh, I would probably bring it up a level. I truly believe that at this point in time, we need to be grounded in what uh, Governor Mills' plan is uh, statewide. I know that uh, South Portland, Portland, uh, and other communities have started to kind of pull the threads on that. And I, I truly believe we need to understand what's going on inside that, those strategies. Uh, uh, and in this legislative session, there's uh, several bills that have been put forward that have dollars associated with them for innovation within towns to address uh, climate change and what uh, their goals will be and what their actions will be. And um, I think that we need to uh, understand what the legislation is, uh, how it fits with our town. And, um, and it's very much tied to the um, strategies outlined in uh, Governor Mills' uh, plan for the state of Maine. And I think we need to know what's inside there. Uh, we can talk to Troy Moon, we can talk to Eco Main, we can talk to all those people, but they're, they're already grounded in that uh, plan. And I think in order to have a, a really good and robust conversation with them, we have to ground ourselves in that plan, which I sent along to Matt probably, what, about a month and a half ago. Um, uh, so I think that's something we need to understand and we need to understand the legislation that's out there. Um, so we'll see which bills pass, but there's a lot of money that's being uh, tagged for uh, climate change initiatives at the municipal level. Yeah, I, I think that's a great suggestion, Penny. I also um, am cognizant of the fact that a lot of work um, went into that that plan at the working group level um, that you know is is incorporated into the larger plan, um, but there are a lot of more detailed recommendations that were brought forward by each of the the climate working groups um, that include a lot of recommendations for municipalities. And I think part of the work that it'd be great for us to get started on uh, with the help of, you know whatever municipal committee we're, 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 we're working with is to really take a, a deep look into some of those 
um, recommendations from the uh, the community resilience working group and uh, the uh, natural and working lands and the other working groups that are part of the climate council um, as they pertain to municipal action because there's I think there's a lot there for us to to consider um, aside from what may be happening legislatively at the state level. I think some of the dollars that are at the legislative level are tied to those municipal strat initiatives, strategies. Uh, that's what kind of spawned some of those bills, I would assume. So. Yes. Great. Um, oh, yeah, Nicole. Before we move away from infrastructure, I don't think we have anything currently in the works for the expanding of cellular coverage. I know we had um, like emergency services project, but I know that's a big problem in town and one that people are talking about all the time. And um, I don't know what our first step needs to be there, but I do think that it must be a priority, especially as more people work from home. And we talk about wanting to provide rescue services, but when people don't have access to aligned even call rescue services, that is a problem. I'm sorry, I was just scrolling through because I thought I remembered us including an objective that related to that, but um, Jamie, go ahead. Well, I was just gonna update. So again, at our, at our um, joint subcommittee meeting this morning, this was, um, a topic that we talked about for about 10 or 15 minutes. So um, certainly uh, agree with you, Nicole. Um, it's something that we absolutely need to escalate. And it's the, it's the, the glaring thing here that, you know, from my stamp, you know, from my perspective, I think we don't have any investment or, or allocation put towards at this point um, that I, I just don't, I, I think what I'm not clear on. And, and one of the things we talked about this morning was um you know what what exactly the execution against that goal looks like and whether or not it's just crossing our fingers that a national carrier wants to you know add on to an existing tower or some other structure in town or is it building out a municipal you know micro cell network uh, and there's you know all different other solutions that sort of lie in between on that spectrum i don't know matt if you know, if there are um, sort of communication technology consultants that operate in this space that would be useful to sort of assess what our situation is and figure out what the best of those potential avenues is for us to try and pursue or, and if that's the case, you know, is there a little bit of money that needs to be earmarked in the budget to, you know, work with somebody like that? Or, I, you know, I, I suspect we're in a situation where none of us has the um, technical knowledge or, you know, expertise on what to do. It's partially a market-driven, uh, you know, industry and arena. Um, and so it's not something that we as a council can just sit here and say, yeah, let's put up a new cell tower and do that. And that be the thing in the budget that the, you know, that, that satisfies this goal. So I think, I think collectively we need to have a better understanding of what the menu of options is and what, you know, what the, which one of those are, or several of them make the most sense for us. Absolutely. I, I think it, like even just a study of what areas have the most problems and what other towns who have faced these issues have, have done is like step one, if we aren't hiring a consultant or earmarking money for that. Penny? Yeah, I was going to, um, you guys can all disagree. Um, I was going to say that uh, some of the worst areas for um, um, cellular coverage and communication is um, right within our town, Scarborough and South Portland. There are so many dead zones in all three of the communities. I don't know if this could be a collaborative effort to solve the problem. The other thing is um, um, Cape Elizabeth is considered rural um, and uh, I think many other towns that are uh, looking at 
uh, communication and broadband issues, et cetera, and broadband to me is starting to become more of a generic term, uh, not the necessarily the solution. Um, and there's a lot of money from the Fed and the state level that's going to be earmarked for um, uh, coverage so that we can have telemedicine and um, remote schooling and all of those things. And there are many towns that are within the southern main area uh, that are also that are going to be looking towards some of those funds to solve their problems. So I think we just need to be an MMA is all over this. Um, I just think that we need to stay uh, apprised of what's out there for funding and whether we want to do some sort of collaborative solution because um, uh, the dead zones in all three of the communities are just um, rampant. It's terrible. So. Valerie? And um, I just want to direct this to Matt and Donna. Aren't there funds earmarked in the ARPA for um, that type of projects so that there is more broadband, there is con connectivity for schools? Um, isn't there money earmarked for that? And maybe the state already has money that it would send our way. Do you know, Matt? I, I know there is a, a large component that is specific to broadband. I think much of it is uh, is targeted toward, towards areas like either last mile or uh, uh, or getting to areas that do not that are not currently served by it, uh, due to the fact that it may be uh, you know, such an extensive stretch between uh, between connections, for lack of you know inst installations. So, uh, you know, in in our area, we we have extensive broadband. It's the speed that is the big challenge, and what you know the the band the the you know fat pipe versus the skinny pipe for lack of a better way to describe it, but uh, that's been one of the challenges. So uh, I think they'll, they'll be uh, uh, delivering a lot of those funds will be organized through the state when they do, uh, as it does tend to trickle. But I think a lot of that is, 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 is directed towards more rural areas and then probably secondarily to improve, uh, improve the uh, performance in the more uh, defined areas as well. Thank you. I think what I would, I think to kind of put a, a sum on this topic, I, I would say I would say it sounds like there continues to be a high level of, of council interest in moving forward on this. Um, and that um, Matt, I think you probably have some ideas for things to pursue here and, and we could ask you to report back to us. And if it turns out that we we do need to allocate some amount of funding in the upcoming fiscal year to a needs assessment or some other options that are, are you know, to, to help us better define those options. Um, it doesn't sound like we know what that number is right now, um, but that sounds like something that the council might be willing to entertain budgeting for from the unassigned, unassigned fund balance um, once we've got a better handle on what the cost might be. Yep. I think that I think that'd be great, and and yeah, we there are assets uh, or folks around town who we could have conversations with as well. And then, uh, and if we can, uh, if we can find a way to collaborate with our neighbors to the uh, to the west and the east, or the north and the north and the south, uh, I'd be more than happy to do that. I have good relationships with both of them, and if we can work to, together to to find a solution, that would be. And I think they'd appreciate that as well, because I know they hear the same as 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 we do. Oh, sorry, Nicole. I just want to add, Matt, I saw that T-Mobile has hometown grants of up to $50,000 for rural towns um, to help solve this problem. So potentially a solution and it's specifically written to elected officials and town managers. So maybe we can fill that out and see where it goes. And, and the, the other thing is we, there may be, uh, uh, I know there must be some, uh, uh, zoning amendment or uh, a zoning amendment fatigue at this point, but uh, small cell installations, uh, you know, the, the next step in the technology uh, currently aren't noted in our zoning ordinance. So it may be something that we may want to address that and uh, to allow them across across the uh, different zoning districts in town uh, in advance of uh, the, that technology being deployed uh, in the area. 
uh, you know, it'd be like trying to approve uh, telephone poles today. You can never get them approved unless we took them all for granted. So. Great. Um, I'm going to take one more comment from Jamie, and then I think I'd like to move us along to the next well, goal. I, I think I think you just raised a really good point, Matt. And in, in light of what we're going through on the affordable housing ordinance and amendments and, and stuff like that, what, what I'd love to do is have the ordinance committee initiate work associated with setting up the, the framework for allowing that as an option, at least, even if, even if it's not a live ball that we're considering, but that at least gets the, you know, gets that work in motion so that, you know, number one, we're prepared to take advantage of it should the opportunity come up. But number two, we don't find ourselves in the position of, you know, people saying, oh, well, T-Mobile came in and they're all looking to do this for you. And now all of a sudden we're catering our rules to meet their whims and desires, right? So that's, you know, some of the critique that we're facing on the affordable housing thing. And so, if we can set the stage to enable that now, even if we don't have an identified solution in place, I think that would be really helpful for us, so. Great, thanks, Jamie. I think that's a great suggestion. Um, I would like to move us along to the next goal area, which is education and continuous learning. Um, so our large goals here are to support programming and services for citizens and ensure that citizens have access and opportunity for feedback and engagement. Um, I would note that the two objectives under the first goal, um, encouraging library programming for a variety of interests and ages um, and seeking learning and experience opportunities for all citizens through community services uh, appear to me to be pretty well reflected in our current budget. Um, so. And um, so looking down through these other objectives, um, the assessing the needs and ability to implement virtual meetings and online forums as part of our meeting options, uh, my understanding or my recollection is that this is um, reflecting the fact that we've, we've been meeting this way a lot over the last year and aspects of it have worked pretty well for some people um, and less well for others. So just making sure that we're maintaining options that are working for people um, and learning from our experience um, that we've been forced to <laughs> learn from due to COVID and keeping the good parts. Um, I don't foresee a particular budget item associated with that unless anyone has another opinion on that. Um, the other two items on assessing how other towns engage citizens and survey residents. Um, I'm curious for thoughts um, from counselors on these, um, as well as anything else I just covered. Okay. Um, I'm glad to circle back if people want, but I'm going to move on to fiscal responsibility and economic opportunity. So our large goal here is to maintain fiscal responsibility, balancing town priorities with economic realities. Um, the uh, I'll just go through the, the sub points here um, under that. So ensuring financial decisions consider the current and future impacts of onto the town's tax base, identifying new revenue sources, pursuing cooperative purchase and resource sharing with neighboring communities and maintaining municipal bond rating to ensure capital needs can be met on favorable terms. Um, I, my assessment would be that, that um, all of these are pretty well reflected in the current budget. Um, I, the, the one I'm hesitating on is the second one of around I do, uh, identifying new revenue sources. Um, but I am curious for other comments or thoughts from counselors or the manager. <laughs> well, if, if it's helpful, I, uh, the, one, the one item that you did take this year was expanding uh, <laughs> parking fees into April and part of November. So that, that, that did expand an existing uh, area, but that, that, you know, we are, we are in year three. So that would be uh, consistent with that, with that approach there as well. Uh, to help fund as, in a sense, a, a pay, pay as you go or pay as you use uh, type of approach for, for our, our, our visitors. Uh, so that's, that's one area. Uh, uh, we do have somewhat limited uh, areas we can grow uh, revenues in, but, uh, but we're always looking for opportunities where we can uh, discover new, new 
new funding opportunities, obviously in grants, uh, things along those lines. But those are those are they are still considered revenue, but it's uh, revenue of, of a non-traditional type, at least uh, in the business sense. Penny, I saw your hand go up and down. Did you your question get answered? No, I didn't have a question. I was kind of going to say what Matt just said is uh, uh, some of some of these um, some of these items are things that say when an opportunity arises, we've got a goal here to seize it. So um, and um, and so uh, just like on the previous page, uh, if we see an uh, an area where uh, there's a town using something that we find of interest to engage citizens, then we have a goal that says, okay, let's look at that. And uh, so some of these are things that say, okay, uh, it's, a it's, a, it's a goal for us, it's a priority, so let's look at it. So they aren't necessarily going to map 100% into our, our budget, but into our thinking. That's kind of the way I look at it. Yeah, thank you. I, I agree with that. And I think the value of this exercise tonight is twofold. You know, one is just to make sure that we're not inadvertently, you know, overlooking funding of, of things that of items that we've identified as priorities. I think the other value of this exercise is, is putting these goals back in front of the council again and reminding us um, of, of actions that we need to be scheduling for I agree. I think it, it's a great exercise, Jeremy. Don't think that I wasn't, I, I'm not supportive of it because this is like the kind of thing that I think is extremely important, but I just uh, wanted to uh, say that. So yeah, no, I appreciate the observation, Penny. It was a good one. Um, okay, um, so moving through um, the next one, uh, looking at promoting businesses in town, the actions we have listed, um, identified are listing businesses on the town website and creating awareness of the diversity of businesses in town. Um, again, just looking at this from a budget review perspective, these don't seem to be major drivers of the municipal budget. Um, so unless folks have specific comments on, on implementation um, at this time, I think we can probably move on to the next set of objectives. Okay. So the next set of objectives are around health and diverse communities. Um, the first um, goal is to meet the diverse needs of our community with objectives of develop and preserve affordable housing opportunities locally and regionally, which we are currently engaged in um, in a variety of ways. Um, evaluating assistance needs among senior residents um, and then leveraging, uh, which I would note um, is addressed through the senior property tax relief program included in the budget um, currently, that's how we're addressing that. Um, and then leveraging knowledge of town staff to discover opportunities to support the undiscovered needs of residents, including social and emotional well being. Any additional comments, questions, or thoughts on how these objectives are reflected in the current budget? Penny. I just have a question for, for Matt around the implementation of that leveraging of knowledge. Um, I know that you have. Uh, uh, conversation with department heads uh, many times throughout the week. Are they aware of this uh, goal and the importance of um, uh, counselors wanting to be aware of issues that uh, people may be experiencing and we could help in some way? I think to a department, yes, they are, they are, especially on those that have more interactions with with the public uh, on a day to day or or on more more than one occasion type uh, type basis. I know uh, police department specifically does a lot of outreach uh, with with members of the community, uh, as well as you know from our GA side of it for those who may qualify who may not qualify, uh, identifying their needs, and then uh, I know. Uh, but I know that all of our department heads are up to speed with the, the council's desire to have this, and uh, as well as uh, you know through community services as well to you know allowing people if there is a need to to take advantage of programming as well as uh, through library services. So uh, we do I, I do think comprehensively our departments uh, do try to uh, attend to those uh, and keep that as front of mind as well. Uh, 
or they do find a need that it gets identified quick and we try to find if we can find assistance for people we do. And I know we've talked about uh, programming for um, uh, young people who might need after school help and whether we can use the Jordan Trust for uh, certain scholarship type of things. Um, there's also uh, kind of the uh, happenstance kind of uh, department that the uh, public works might see that uh, somebody seems to not be uh, mowing their lawn that used to do that and haven't come out of their house. I mean, those are things that people um, in our various out and about in town may notice. And for, I think the department and depart the department had to communicate to all of their staff that we, they are, are the eyes and ears for uh, the council, every single uh, employee in the town and that it's important to us to understand the needs that are out there. So that's kind of uh, some of the things that go through my brain. Yep, no, I agree, agree completely. There are, you know, there are a couple different circumstances that have taken place in this past year alone that I think uh, staff had identified, had noticed something while they were out in the field and did outreach through other departments, either PD or uh, via uh, Peter and the fire department and rescue to respond as well. Uh, so we've, I think, yeah, holistically, I think all departments try to tie into that, uh, that ethic as well. I, I just, Valley? Yeah. Um, just following along with what um, Penny was saying, the question says evaluate assistance um, needs. It seems that the town is doing that. Um, I don't know that the council really has a way to evaluate except evaluated except by what's brought to us or communicated to us. I'd really like to see some way that those things are communicated to us. And I know that if it's um, assistance through the, the, um, the Jordan Trust, that's communicated to us. There's certain things, but some of it's not communicated to us. And I don't, and I don't mean to, that we should micromanage, but it would be nice to um, to know certain needs that are out there, and maybe we could talk about it or workshop it. But I just don't know how that works or how that would be brought to our attention. You know what I mean, Matt? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I'll have, to, I'll have to dedicate some more bandwidth on how to provide updates to council uh, on that as as we do uh, look at it, because I know. You know, when we're doing into food insecurity or other other uh, areas, uh, you know, pandemic's been a great opportunity to try to expand and explore that as uh, as part of the service that we do. And I know uh, specifically the police department has done a lot of work on that. You know, with outreach to folks who were transportation challenged, uh, mobility challenged, things along those lines by you know going to the the, the Hannaford's pharmacy or. Uh, uh, running errands or, or picking up groceries for folks, you know, who were uh, under duress during the pandemic or could not go out due to the concern of getting exposed. So, you know, that's, those are just a couple of examples that, that I know the PD has stepped up above and beyond as, uh, so that's, those are some areas there, but to find a way to bring that back to council uh, to keep you up to speed on that, uh, I'll have to, we'll have to work on a way to, to try to share that in, in the proper channel, I think. Yeah, and, and when we talked about the tax relief program, um, that, that was great because it was something that, um, you know, was brought forward to us and discussed and it was um, communicated really well. So it'd be nice to, to know what some of those needs are and have it communicated um, somehow to the council. No, no, happy to. Great, thank you, Valerie. Um, Gretchen? Uh, I might be just repeating what she said, but what I'm hearing is that, that we can address the individual needs um, sometimes when they're brought forward, but there, there might be, if one person's having that problem, it might be um, happening to a lot of other people that we don't know about. So just hearing about those trends. So if there, you know, you find out two citizens are having issues with transportation, it might be a light bulb to say, you know, maybe we should take a look and see if that's happening more frequently. And I just want to point out that this links back to, this is also interrelated, right? The um, survey one that we just looked at. 
So when we say evaluate um, needs among the senior residents, like that survey might serve that same purpose. So just that might be a vehicle for getting some of that feedback. Another area that's been very uh, successful or at least uh, very helpful in, in working on this is community services and the library both have, uh, you know, they have huge networks of folks and they're interconnected and, uh, you know, <laughs> there's been, you know, they know, you know, if someone's not, if someone may, may need some help and I think that's, that's helped uh, to do that as well as providing programming, you know, luncheons uh, and now they're starting to get back more towards normalcy. Uh, fingers were heavily crossed there, but uh, you know, as we did that in the during the course of the year, I know community services has a pretty strong network of at least on the senior side uh, for monthly uh, monthly luncheons that that they've done, as well as programming that I know Rachel has done a great job pulling together at the library. And then you know they would notice if if a person who would continuously come wasn't there. Uh, so I think that would be another area that we would want to identify and do a, a wellness check. And then I know the PD obviously does the, uh, the, the uh, wellness check as well as part of their uh, normal operations. So there's a ton out there, but it, yeah, if we, can, if we could identify it, that, I think that'd be a great opportunity to discuss that at our next department head meeting and then report back to council as to uh, you know, what our current areas are. And then quite frankly, identify areas that we could improve on or areas that we haven't explored yet too. So I think it's a good, good it'll be a great exercise for us to try to uh, step up our game when it comes to that or improve on what we currently do. Yeah, I think that's value. I think this, this is a great conversation. I, I think the programs that we have in place and, and, and even short of programs, just the practices that we have in place at the department level um, seem to be working well and are well designed. It's, it's sort of a question of not knowing what we don't know um, and, and figuring out if there's a way that we might be able to learn more about that. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna move us along to the next goal, er, uh, goal which is to promote the self, safe and healthy, to promote safe and healthy homes and neighborhoods. And the two action items we have under here are address food insecurity and access to healthy food and meal options for all citizens and revise the short-term rental ordinance and monitor results. I'm gonna go ahead and say, I think that the second one is, um, is pretty well reflected in our budget and what we've managed to accomplish so far this year. Um, I am curious for thoughts on um, how well reflected that for the food insecurity piece is, um, if counselors have specific thoughts on that or questions. Gretchen? Do we have a summer meal program? I feel uh, like I should know that. Uh, through, through the schools? Through the or, schools. Uh, I think Donna is still here with us. Uh, she may, uh, Donna, I'm going to allow you to talk. If, I, I don't want to talk out of turn if, or, or answer that question incorrectly. So I, I have a feeling I know the answer, but I'd rather you uh, jumped in and turn your lifeline. Sure. And we're continually uh, applying for grants. Peter was just telling us this morning in 18 that he had just applied for um, another, uh, or we had just gotten, um, and I don't know if Marcy's still on, but I think we had just gotten a $5,000 grant from um, uh, uh, Full Plates, Full Potential, mm -hmm. and another almost $5,000 grant. Um, from, I believe it was from, from the state. So um, we are working as hard as we can to address that uh, food insecurity. And actually um, going back to your, your conversation about um, the police department, they've been delivering food for us um, as, as families have needed it. So we have fed a lot of people um, during this COVID time. So mm -hmm. um, uh, I don't, we did deliver, yes, we did deliver all summer. That did continue okay. and I'm sure will continue. So um, yes, and every once in a while, the parents will send um, Peter and Robin pictures of their, of their kids eating. And it, it's really, it's so heartwarming. They're so appreciative. And I believe on Wednesday mornings at the middle school, um, there's a pickup program where uh, people can come in and pick up food as well. So. Um, we are providing a lot of food to people and we'll continue with that, so. That's awesome. 
Thank, Thank you, you, Donna, both for the update and for, you know, doing that. Um, Penny, I know this is a subject Thanks. that you have a lot of thoughts on. Um, I, I know that um, uh, we come a lot on, um, on young people, which I am uh, a thousand percent committed to, but um, the gap sometimes are some of the um, older uh, citizens in our town, and, and that's a place where we don't often understand the, um, uh, the level of food insecurity going on, and that's an area that I keep trying to figure out how to delve into and gain a firmer understanding of, uh, but not many people want to share some of the, um, uh, the challenges they might be having. I know that Judy's Pantry, um, um, they definitely serve our community um, and uh, probably upwards of um, 18 to 20 uh, families uh, a week or every three weeks now, uh, but in the summertime, uh, it's every week. I, I really think that there's, um, uh, and, and I'll give this some more thought, I, I really would like to find a way to understand um, the depth of food insecurity in our town because I know it's, it's greater than uh, what we're seeing if you just base it on uh, the, the population uh, from a socioeconomic perspective uh, and the age of the population. So I'd like to figure out how to address the um, food insecurity needs of some of our um, older citizens. So I, I, I think, and I will give that some more thought. Yeah, I think that's a great um, comment and very helpful perspective, Penny. And, and my thought is that it sounds, this sounds a little bit similar to the issue we were discussing earlier around cellular service where, you know, there are things that we, we know we don't know. <laughs> Um, and so I wonder if, if maybe an action item that would move us in the direction of, of getting some better knowledge around what some of the policy levers we could pull might be, would be to see if we could pull together a workshop with, um, with folks from Judy's Pantry, um, potentially folks from the community services who are running the, the senior luncheon program, um, and, and also um, um, Peter from the, the school um, side. Um, and and just have that have that deliberate conversation. Um, I think that mm -hmm. would be a worthwhile way to start. I agree. Okay. Um, Marcy, I saw your hand go up and down quickly. Did you have anything you wanted to add? Just wanted to add that um, we were able to upgrade our kitchen at the high school with COVID relief money that assists in the Wednesday food plan for families. And that has been our huge remote operation. And I wanna just do a huge shout out to Peter Esposito and Robin Taylor who uh, take that over. And I wanna also do a shout out to the commitment from town council and the school board for your continuing effort in, in feeding the families and the children. It really has made a difference this past year and summer. And I texted Robin just now just to make sure I was right on something. I think they're trying to collaborate with the summer program for um, community services as well. For, and they will continue with the summer feeding plan. Great, thank you, Marcy. Jamie? Um, I was just thinking that one possible way to bridge some of the um, school side and senior side is the successful senior to senior program that runs through the high school. And um, I don't, I don't know that, I don't know if there's a way that um, those resources and and those kids can somehow be utilized to, you know, create that outreach, create those connections, and ultimately maybe serve to help fill the need um, that might exist there. So that's another thing that might be worth exploring um, to address the the older demographic. Thanks, Jamie. That's a great suggestion, too. All right, I'm going to move us on um, to our last 
two goal areas, um, which are natural and cultural resources and ongoing initiatives. So under natural and cultural resources, um, we have the first goal is to protect access to town resources and assets with objectives of completing the Fort Williams master plan, uh, which is currently included in the budget, uh, coming to resolution with paper streets, which um, I believe we have the resources that we've identified that we need um, to move that forward this year in the budget um, and establishing a new boat access area at Crescent Beach, uh, which is also um, reflected in the, in the current budget. Um, are there any additional comments or questions on those items? Okay, we can come back to it if people think of any. Um, moving down to the next goal, which is to preserve the natural resources of Cape Elizabeth. Uh, the first item, replacing the Willowbrook culvert, is included in the budget, um, a lot as with including some, some grant funded revenues, um, which is great. Um, and continuing our municipal stormwater management, um, such as with the Kettle Cove drainage project, um, which is, um, you know, we, we have a plan for moving forward with that. Um, under natural resource protection, we have a goal of considering a pesticide and herbicide ordinance, um, not a major budget driver, but we do have that on the agenda for an upcoming council workshop, I believe. Yep, May 5th. Yep. Um, promoting clean and litter-free streets and other public spaces and developing a don't trash Cape campaign to rid the streets, paths and open spaces of litter. Um, I don't, necessarily see these as my major budget drivers, um, but I, I'd be curious if counselors have any specific thoughts or questions on either of those items and how they reflect in the budget. I have, Valerie? Um, is that something that we can um, send to the conservation committee that we can ask them to develop, um, especially the don't trash cape and that sort of a thing? Um, even the recycling committee. It just seems like those are a couple things that um, maybe some of our committees can work on and get back to us. Yeah, it sort of seems to lie at the intersection of those two committees. Mm -hmm. But I think that's a good suggestion. Okay, um, and then moving on to the last one, recognizing the history of our town. Um, the objective under this is to explore the potential for historic preservation designations for landmarks. Um, again, I think this is something that we can move forward on with the resources that we have in the current budget, um, probably more a matter of scheduling the appropriate discussion um, at the council level. And the last goal area that we have is ongoing initiatives. So the first goal here is to equip employees with the training and resources they need to deliver high quality services to the town with objectives of continuously evaluating organizational structure, succession planning, staff utilization and process improvements, encouraging professional and personal growth opportunities for all employees and offer diversity, equity, and inclusion training. Um, I believe all of these items are addressed either through ongoing operations or you know, at, at, and at the level that's needed in the current budget. Um, but I would pause to see if any counselors have questions or comments. I have a pretty specific one, uh, code enforcement and the upcoming uh, bottleneck of short-term rental. Do we, do we need a temporary resource, um, extra support in general over there? And then the other one we talked about previously was, I don't think they've budgeted for another officer to enforce parking and all of those things. Um, so those are just two things I see as potential new hires we may need soon. If, if it's helpful, I know uh, Ben and I were speaking uh, about uh, the code enforcement side of it, uh, looking at, 
collaborating with another community because uh, there there may be you know there may be a need for X, especially with the energy code com coming in where it's at and the, uh, some new codes that are going to be on coming. Uh, we may see that in next year's budget, but at the same time, we may find the opportunity this year to collaborate with another town uh, to share a person that could help in uh, to free up some of that capacity. So so Ben could do it because yeah, June's going to be. Uh, a very busy month, uh, or at least we anticipate it will, specific to short-term rentals. I know we've already, you know, they have the forms that they're working on and uh, and, and ready and getting ready to implement that. And then, uh, yeah, that's 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 the, that's a big one. And then on the enforcement side with the police, I think uh, we have some ideas as far as enforcement. Uh, with the beach enforcement, for instance, we do have some bandwidth with our rangers from the fort uh, to try to have them help us uh, go down there and monitor that uh, as we're, uh, as we we do need to hire. So if you're looking for someone who's looking for a great part-time summer job, uh, please uh, give them my number. Uh, but I know Kathy's looking to hire an additional ranger, uh, but to have them help with the enforcement down there and you know on, on the soft side. And then if we knew, do need to involve uh, the PD, then that would be their enforcement side uh, on that. Uh, and I think we could also be helpful down at the, uh, uh, I wanna say Seaview Beach, uh, as well, uh, but also our enforcement will be able to, I think we'll work with that, especially year one, uh, similar to Fort Williams. We, you know, it's about visibility and making sure people know that it's, uh, it needs to be enforced. But I know uh, Chief Fenton has, has plans for the uh, proper enforcement down there. Uh, big challenge would be the, you know, we, we will need to get the signage up here shortly as uh, the 30 days are running out to, to have the no parking on the, the side that we do, that was identified uh, with that amendment, so. Uh, we do have a plan in place and uh, hopefully uh, at least this year we won't have a fiscal tie to it but uh, there we may come back uh, specific on on the code side uh, at some point uh, this year and we may have to come back to have that conversation thank you yeah. thank you oh, and if, I, if I could just put in a, just one yeah, other quick ahead. item on diversity equity and inclusion training i know uh, i've been making that available throughout the the year as this training has come on board and uh uh, Deborah could probably say I, I, I didn't really softly encourage department heads to, to take the training uh, uh, to, to make sure that we have that as part of it because I think it's it's critical to where we're at, especially in light of the current year. But uh, going forward, I think it's important for us to all have that uh, as a as a municipal operation uh, front of mind. And uh, we've got some great great folks, and I think these are excellent tools that, that people need to be aware of, as well as uh, for our own personal growth uh, to do it. So. Uh, I've encouraged and paid for uh, classes for department heads to do that as we've gone along and uh, they've been enthusiastically jumping in uh, as well. So uh, as we go forward, we, you know, we, we, we will have you know, inline staff as well if they'd like to take advantage of that training. We may also try to find a way to have it in person as, as we actually get to you know, the ability to get together in person at some point as well. So MMA has had a great stable of folks who provided that as, as many of your counselors know as well because you've been at some of them that I that I've been at as well. So, uh, but we do we do see that as a very important part of what we do on an annual basis now. Great, thank you, Matt. Any other questions or comments from counselors on these this item? All right. Um, feel free to jump back in if you need to. Um, I'm going to move on to the next um, a goal, which is to collaborate with regional partners, and the objectives that we've identified are. Identify opportunities to share services and resources with other communities and participate in solving re regional social economic issues. Um, I would note that it seems that both of these um, objectives are, are well reflected in the current budget. Uh, I'll pause for any questions or comments from counselors. Okay, and then the last um, goal area that we have um, on the council goals is to leverage the work and recommendations of town committees um, with two objectives, review and incorporate committee recommendations in council direction and decision-making, e.g. Fort Williams, civil rights and energy, um, and revi revisiting goals and strategic map every six months. Again, neither of these are, are significant budget drivers. Um, I, Feel we have the resources to do that and we are I think three months out from when we started really seriously having these goals together so we're 
we're beating that time frame that we set for ourselves, which is great. Um, with that, I, in, um, I would just open back up to the council to ask if uh, follow as follow up on that discussion, if there are any other um, revisions to the budget that people would like to have us consider at this time. Um, and and I'll, I'll pause for a response before I move us on to the next thing. All right, hearing none, um, I would just like once more to extend uh, my thanks and the thanks of the council to, to the manager and staff for the budget preparation process this year, as well as to the school department um, and um, the school finance chair, um, Phil Saucier, for his excellent presentation of the school budget last night. Um, I, I, this is, um, I think this process is great. Um, I really appreciate uh, the work that Councillor Boucher brought to helping us think through these goals and objectives. And I, you know, I think there are probably ways that we can tweak and improve on this process going forward, but this has been a great um, start to really helping make these goals and objectives more actionable and how we're considering our, our municipal funding. So, so thank you um, to all of those folks. Uh, and I would just say, I think that is all of the items that we have on the agenda. We did um, last night uh, discuss the possibility of continuing the conversation with um, the school department or the school board around uh, programming capital expenditures over the coming years. Um, and so just as a, a report back to the full council, I would note that this was a uh, subject that came up at the monthly coordination meeting this morning uh, because of a communication oversight. Um, it was, you know, we, we didn't, we didn't give the school board enough time to, to, to have this worked into their calendars. Um, and so the plan that we've identified for moving forward, um, I continue to feel that that's a valuable exercise, uh, especially as we're anticipating some large ticket items, including the shore road um, improvements and um, work at the schools coming up in the next few years. Um, the plan of action that we've identified going forward is to uh, have some discussion um, and a report from town staff, which we can begin tonight if folks would like to around what some of those items are and how they relate to our current debt schedule for when debt will be retired retired so that we can begin to to game out what the scenarios look like um, and when we met this morning with folks from the school board uh, the desire was to come back together with both full boards um, ideally sometime before we lose Donna um, so that we can continue that discussion and and just begin begin talking about what that looks like um, as a strategy any comments or questions on that for now? So um, I would, um, Matt, we're we're looking we're going to be looking to you for um, a suggestion on on timing to schedule that in a way that fits in with sort of the the budget process cycle as well as you know workload for the folks on the finance staff. Okay. Uh, and, and Don and I will uh, probably speak on this within the next day or two to try to look at a date that we could uh, identify uh, prior to her departure. But uh, uh, probably early early June is what we'd be we trying to to pull that in together for. So possibly the June seventh workshop may, may not be a bad uh, opportunity for that as well. Okay. Great. And Jamie, did you have anything to add on that topic? No, I, I think I think you covered it, and I, I think you know the discussion we had this morning was, um, you know, give uh, both Matt and John, as well as Donna and Marcy, the opportunity to pull together um, sort of the detail where we can have a better, almost visual view of of where some of the overlapping of priorities might be coming in the next, um, you know, three, five, seven years or so, um, as well as a view of you know, some of the things that are coming off the books, um, just so that we can have 
a little bit more of a complete picture. And then if, if there's a, a need to, um, to look at, you know, any juggling of those priorities that might need to happen, uh, if there's any concern about, um, you know, pushing us beyond our thresholds and things like that, so. Thanks, Jamie. Um, I'm gonna give one more opportunity for counselors to make any questions or comments, and then um, we'll close this workshop and move on to a special council meeting. Um, so I'm pausing. And I'm gonna turn it over to Jamie for the special council meeting. Thanks, Jeremy. Um, thanks for doing a good job. Um, on all these budget meetings too. Uh, appreciate the work um, that you did leading as the finance chair. Um, so we'll call to order um, the special meeting of the Cape Elizabeth Town Council for this Tuesday, April 27th. Um, Deb, could you read the roll please? Chairman Garvin. Here. Councilor Boucher. Here. Councilor Devereaux. Here. Councilor Gabrielson. Here. Councilor Caitlin Jordan. Here. Councilor Penelope Jordan. Here. Councilor Noonan. Here. You have a quorum. Thank you very much. Um, there are no um, members of the general public present at the current time. So um, seeing um, no need for any citizen comment, the single agenda item that we have is to set to a public hearing, uh, the proposed fiscal 22 general fund for both municipal and school and special revenue budgets. Uh, to set to a public hearing, a special meeting on Monday, May 3rd at 7 p.m. Uh, it is anticipated that the special revenue funds and the uh, budgets will be voted on May 3rd, and the general fund will then be voted on on May 10th. So is there a motion to set um, to a public hearing uh, the aforementioned budgets to Monday, May 3rd at 7 p.m.? So moved. Um, Moved second. by Councillor Penny Jordan, seconded by uh, Councillor Gabrielson. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, uh, Deb, could you call the roll for the vote then, please? Councillor Boucher? Yes. Councillor Devereaux? Yes. Councillor Gabrielson? Yes. Councillor Caitlin Jordan? Yes. Councillor Penelope Jordan? Yes. Councillor Noonan? Yes. Chairman Garvin? Yes. Motion carries. Okay, um, still nobody else from the public here. So assuming no other um, public comment is, um, are we are planning to move into executive session for the purpose of continuing the evaluation of town manager, the annual evaluation of town manager. So we're gonna switch off of this Zoom link and move to a different one um, that is private for the executive session purposes. So um, I will note, I'll make sure to remember this time, Deb, the time of adjournment and uh, any motion to exit executive session and get that to you. Um, so um, if there's nothing anybody else has for this general special meeting, we'll move over to that and then adjourn for the night out of that meeting. Does that make sense? Is that the one that is labeled that's labeled special council meeting. Yes. I think the link for it. Okay. Sorry. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Okay. So we'll reconvene in a few minutes uh, over there. That's good.